Taurus friends and welcome to your June 2020 horoscope for Taurus. It's interesting. June is a busy month. We've got a lot happening astrologically. It is creating shifts and ripples that we will see for the next five to six months. But at the same time, it's kind of not very eventful because we're in heavy retrograde. 60% of the planets are going to be retrograde this month. So it's like, yeah, go forward, but you know, slowly. <laughs> extra slowly. So let's jump in here, Taurus, and talk about what this very busy month has got on the menu for you. Now, right as we come into the month on the second, we see Mercury, who is going to go retrograde this month, coming into its shadow time, okay? So on the second, if you start to see communications getting a little bit trippy, if you're watching Stormy Grace channel and things happen, that's because Mercury is beginning to slow down and come into retrograde energy, okay? So communications, cars, devices, give people a little bit of grace, start to understand that maybe there's just a blip in the system and Mercury is slowing to be able to turn around, okay? Now, as we get to the fifth of this month, we're kicking it off right away with a full moon lunar eclipse happening at 15 degrees of Sagittarius. Now, this is going to be lighting up your eighth house space. Now, a full moon already says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So it naturally creates a shift for us. But a lunar eclipse is a complete like reset to what's happening. And we can see this play out over six months months okay now this is in your eighth house so a couple things to know first of all the eighth house is about joint resources and i say intimacy because whether it be my money whether it be my body whether it be my healing or my fears that is a deep connection to another source right but joint resources income taxes insurance sex um, reproduction in any kind of way but also this idea of addressing fears or addressing death. This is a very big, vulnerable, intimate connection that we have to the universe and sometimes to other people, right? So as this full moon is happening in the eighth house, one of the things I keep seeing for you is that something in a partnership that you have, whether it be a person, place, or thing, a piece of it may be dying off or it may be shedding because it's trying to live in a different way, right? Like it needs a bigger picture view to it. So it's like, ah, I've got to shed. I've got to expand here. I've got to get more information around here. This could even be for many of you, Torrens, um, a collaboration. Maybe you're actually joining a collaboration because you have expanded out or you are willing to expand out. This would be a wonderful energy for that to happen. Now, if it has to do with a part partnership shifting, you can kind of plan for there to be maybe a little bit of a loss or a little bit of a step back that happens. It will be temporary because any benefits will likely be delayed because we're in such a high retrograde. But the shift would be to rebalance things. And the question is always in the eighth house. With this other thing, if the other side of this falls out, can I still stand on my own? So that'll be a question that I think you'll find yourself interacting with is where's the independence in the interdependence? So make sure you're taking a look at that, okay? On the 18th of the month, we see Mercury ready for that retrograde. So he's slowed down on the second. Now he's officially into the retrograde in the energy of Cancer right here on the 18th. Now he's going to start off at 14 degrees of Cancer and he's going to end at 5 degrees of Cancer on um, July 12th. Now, in this third house space, this tells me you are going to review very mercurial things. You're thinking your decision making, your perception, your perspective on things. Also, if you have yourself, if you're in some kind of lower education, maybe you're a teacher, you teach elementary school or something like that, educational changes, all of these things will be making a shift, right? And what we're doing with that, with Mercury Retrograde, is we're re-editing, we're reconnecting, we're revising, we're rethinking, we're going back over it in some way, shape, or form. Because this does hit your third house, I think it's a phenomenal month to go back to any communications that maybe didn't get a solid finish up, right? Like if you've got those follow-up emails and you haven't quite followed up with them, go ahead and go back to do that. Adjust your website. Go back to edit that book or write that book. Um, if you do have children who are in school as well and they haven't quite finished during quarantine, you'll, we'll start to see that there is an actual wrap up of all of the educational things here at this point in June. The last thing I was thinking about here is that truly, as you go back over your thoughts from the last six months, I think Mercury here in Cancer is going to let you see um, where an idea actually just needs more support. It's like, hey, just bring in more support and we can communicate this idea 
out into the world. We can communicate this idea with the siblings. We can connect a little bit more with the um, with the neighbors. It's summertime or wintertime, depending on where you're at. Can we connect more? Mercury will definitely take you back there. Be mindful of your cars, of your devices or anything like that. Back up everything that you have on your computers and things like that. Mercury retrograde can be really tricky and definitely do some frying of our on devices. On June 20th, we welcome okay. the sun into the energy of cancer, bringing in light, heat, life, and vitality into this third house. So you are motivated. You are motivated to take action. You are motivated to be seen here. Maybe you are getting those past projects going and now you're able to communicate them out. In the Northern Hemisphere, we are also welcoming in summer and our friends on the other side will be welcoming welcoming in winter. So for all of us, we're getting a little bit of a season change, which I think is a very welcome kind of energy, even though it will be nice and slow. I feel like there's delayed sense of change that comes. So we may not actually feel like, oh, we're in a new season until July, but it does happen. On the 21st, we also welcome in the new moon happening in the energy of Cancer. And this is a new moon solar eclipse at zero degrees of Cancer. When it's at zero degrees or 29 degrees, we know that there are important things happening. There are important beginnings happening. And these beginnings are going to be significant enough, Taurus, in your third house to last you six months. And then because eclipses work in pairs, we will likely even see you developing this thing, I think, all the way well until 2021. Now, in your third house, the other thing I can tell you here is if you've got ideas and you want to put them out there, at this new moon solar eclipse, request help to see who to network those things with. Request help to see who to talk to about whatever. Request help for content ideas, for conversation ideas. Whatever it is that you need to think about, communicate about, maybe you're studying, maybe you're teaching and developing something, ask for help here because the disruption of your thinking will be replaced by the thing that's actually perfectly on track for you, okay? On the 23rd, we see Neptune going retrograde, bringing our monthly retrogrades to 60%. This is a lot of retrograde energy. Now, Neptune will be retrograde in the energy of Pisces until November 29th, and this is going to light up your 11th house. The 11th house is friends, organizations, social groupings. It's also long-range plans and goals and designs. Now, when, when Neptune goes retrograde, what happens is that... Neptune out of retrograde provides us the in between the worlds, like a little bit of fantasy, a little bit of daydream, some compassion, some creativity. And so as Neptune goes retrograde, our reality here in front of us seems like, boom, this is real, right? It is very heavy. It is very concrete. It's like, whew, I got to face that. But as she's working on your retrograde through this fringe long range plans place, what you're doing is going back with a fine tooth comb and you're putting some fantasy, you're putting some creativity, you're putting this place where you're like, I don't think I ever even thought to dream or to believe that this was possible. And you're creating the ideal in this area of your life so that in five months, as Neptune comes out of retrograde, you're able to apply that. Remember, I always say that a chair before it was an actual useful material object was just an idea. So over this next five months, create your ideal in this area of your life so that as we get to the end of the year, you can make that a concrete reality for yourself. So if you don't have your soul tribe, your divine tribe, if you don't feel supported, this is a great time to, to look at that, okay? On the 25th, Venus is direct again. She'll be stationing direct at five degrees of Gemini, lighting up your second house. This is the money house. Venus is happy here in the money, but Venus in Gemini is a beautiful mind. It's beautiful thinking. It's beautiful decision making. And Taurus, you don't play about your money, right? So likely over this retrograde, you've relooked at your financial situation and, and been prepared to make some different decisions. Your relationships, the skills, the talents that you have that you could be using to make money. I hope that during the retrograde because it's Gemini that you talked to someone else who could maybe mirror back your value to you so you could see what you could possibly do with that. I mean, in the second house here, um, anything that you can do that allows you to expand this area of how you bring money or how you bring value into your life, I think is absolutely divine. And Venus will bring the harmony to be able to do that. On the 28th, we see Mars entering into the energy of Aries where he is perfectly comfortable. He is perfectly motivated. He is perfectly willing to do stuff, be in action, motivate these desires. Now, this is going to light up the 12th house space for you. Here's the thing I will tell you. 
Trust your dreams. This is 12th house, the place of things that are hidden, a place of things that are in between the world. The natural ruler of the 12th house, Neptune, is retrograde, right? So I want you to trust your, your dreams. I want you to trust your intuition this month. Neptune in the general for you lives in the 11th house. So the people you want to connect with, the organizations you want to connect with, your long range dreams, goals, plans, anything like that. Trust your instincts and your intuition as to what you're being shown about these things. But Mars here in Aries is also trying to help you bring things to culmination, to complete them, to lay them to rest, to transition. It is okay for you to transition, but you trust your instincts on some of this as well, okay? As we end the month on the, on the 30th, we're going to see Jupiter and Pluto come into their next conjunction of the year. Now we saw one already in April, right? And Venus and or Venus and Pluto, uh, Jupiter and Pluto, as they come together, what they are doing is creating this supercharged energy for you to move forward and get something done. Make your dreams come true. It is literally the wisdom of dying off in order to achieve something else. Now, in April, they were both forward. So it was like, boom, we're going to start this thing. Boom, we're going to work on this ninth house area. Publishing, marketing, broadcasting, higher level education, that YouTube channel, your thinking, your faith, your philosophy, all of these things you started to take some action on, no matter how big or small, you took action on them. Now, as they meet again to be in a conjunction, both Jupiter and Pluto are retrograde. So you're going to go back over what you've already begun and they're going to show you that you have got an immense capacity to defeat and to make peace and to work with and to overcome your challenges. Whatever you started, you've maybe felt a slowdown or you're like, I know that this can continue to move forward, but how do I do that? These two come together and it's going to help you discover. You go back over what you began in this area and it's going to help you discover what you need in order to clean it up, tidy up, and then get it ready to really launch and achieve your desires. This is a powerful energy, my friends. I don't want you to miss out with it. So if you keep an astrology journal, Look back. What did you um, begin around April 4th? Something in this particular realm of your life, right? Or grab your own chart and see where these two are actually conjoining so that you can see what you began at that time because now you're going to review it to make it damn good so that as we come out five months later, it's ready to roll and we're going to conjoin again. These two will conjoin again, right? And it'll be ready to launch. I think it's going to be a good month. I really do. There's going to be a lot of things that happen in the world because our big outer planets are retrograde. And so we'll keep an eye on the sky and we'll keep an eye on the world and we'll have some conversations in the weekly, maybe even dailies about what's happening there. Make this an absolutely delicious month, Taurus. It's just past birthday time. So you've got a whole new season on your hands. Make, make the most of it for sure. I hope you will continue to join me for the eat and greet collaborations. I've got more people signed up to come visit with us. Maurice Fernandez is on the way. Elizabeth Grace is on the way. Gemini Brett we've had. There are so many people lining up and ready to talk to us um, as we continue to move through the rest of the year. So I hope that you will continue to join us. Okay. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'm sending you all my love and I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye Taurus.